back, everyone, to day one of Super Week here in the North American League of Legends Championship Series. I'm David Rafik Turley, and joining me is the scariest caster, Sam Kilby Hartman Kenzler. <laughs> scariest? Scar I don't know, man. Okay. You're frightening. You sometimes leave me hanging for fist bumps, and I just, <laughs> it hurts me inside. But guys, it's time for the for the first of our next three games. It's Vulcan versus Cloud9. And now both these teams have come off perfect performances in Week 8. But Vulcan still needs a couple more wins to secure a first round bye in the regional playoffs and their spot in Season 4. Yeah, Vulcan is in total control of second place. Even if they only win one game this week, they take second if CLG and TSM lose just once. And unbelievably enough, even if Vulcan goes 0-5 and five this week, they can take second if CLG and TSM lose twice. And for a Vulcan team that ended the spring split in fifth place before making their playoff run, it's been the sort of the play of their league leaders that has made all the difference this summer. Bloodwater is not only leading the league in assists and kill participation, but he leads Vulcan on the rift as their shot caller as well. And then there's their mid laner, Mancloud. He's had an MVP worthy summer and leads the league in kills with 132. But while Vulcan's dynamic duo leads the league in assists and kills, their opponents lead the league in what's most important, wins. <laughs> and with just one more win, Cloud9 will tie Fnatic for the most wins in LCS history at 22, and they already own the record for the longest win streak in the LCS at 13. Plus, if Meteos can continue to put up his death-defying de performances for one more week, then he'll be the first LCS player to end a split with a KDA in the double digits. But with the number one seed already locked in for these guys, will Cloud9 take their foot off the gas and <laughs> kind of try new things in their matches? Or do you think that'll be sort of business as usual for Meteos? For so sure? I interviewed Meteos last week, and he said his team is full of tryhards. They're probably not going to let him, uh, you know, run anything crazy. He's a huge fan of the jungle brand. So Probably won't be seeing it, though. So no brand new junglers here? <laughs> no brand new junglers. But uh, Cloud9 don't want to get complacent. And since Vulcan have beaten them once already this year, then they're going to want to take advantage of this opportunity to play a high-caliber opponent and, and stay sharp, basically. Keep their, keep their uh, wits about them. Keep their wits about them. Now, guys, the players are getting ready. They're heading into the lobby. But before we get into the game, let's send it backstage where Jat is hanging out with Vulcan's coach, Kenma. Thank you very much, guys. And as you said, I'm here with Ken Vulcan's coach. I just have a question about your pregame preparation on game day. What do you do on game day to help Vulcan win? Um, we pretty much we prepare the night before, and then we go over it, we go over it again and ch make any changes last minute that we want to make on the right over, and then anything in the room before the game. Pretty much just get everything set how we want to run it. Were there any last minute changes today, knowing you're coming up against Cloud9, who's already clinched the first seed? No. We're, we're going in with what we planned already. Yeah, and just one more thing here, since you guys are contending for the second place, are you looking to do anything different, say, if you locked it up early? Because two wins this week and you guys are be in. Or are you not thinking about that yet? Um, we're, we're only thinking about getting the wins first, and then whatever happens later will happen. All right, well, thank you very much, Ken. <laughs> and best of luck to Vulcan in this next game. Thanks. And send it back to the guys at the desk. Yeah, thanks very much, Jat. So as you heard there, Vulcan taking it one game at a time, making sure they get their wins, and then... Well, they'll think about partying afterwards, I guess. If you follow the rules, you have to take it one game at a time. Yes. They only allow you to play one. <laughs> I'm going to go 5v10. Let's do this. Believe, I believe. Anyway, guys, let's get ourselves into the game soon and check out the starting lineups. On the blue side, it is Vulcan with Psycho Sid in the top lane, Smithy in jungle, Mancloud in mid, Zuna on AD carry, and Bloodwater as support. And on the red side, it's Cloud9. Balls is up top. Meteos is in the jungle. The mid laner is high. The AD carry is sneaky. And supporting is Lemon Nation. You know, I actually had to fight Sneaky Elimination yesterday or the day ago in Solo Q. You had Q. to fight them? I actually <laughs> had fisticuffs on the rift. It did not go well at all. So these guys were they're keeping their practice going. They're clearly, you know, keeping themselves sharp. I Clearly, they're choosing the most high caliber of opponents <laughs> to practice. <laughs> you can't even say that with a straight face. <laughs> hey, man, blame matchmaking, okay? I tried. It was horrible, by the way. Uh, it went absolutely terribly. Yeah, I'm... I'll take your word for it. Let's go into Champion <laughs> Select, though. Talk about the game at hand. Yeah. All right, so here we go, guys. Vulcan in blue, Cloud9 in red. The cast is already being dropped away. Hi recently started playing that champion, so it seems that uh, Vulcan making some swift sort of adjustments to the champ select strategy. Yeah, so that might be, uh, you know, they're just trying to take out 
one component of the uh, the jumping teams have been become very popular. Everybody is very much focused on these pick compositions, uh, and High is definitely one that loves something like Kassadin that can just take over a game if you get any early gold. And speaking of jumping champions, you've got actually the Caitlyn and Ari dropped out as well away from Vulcan. Mizuna has been playing a lot of Caitlyn. Max has been playing a ton of Ari as well, and it seems like. Ari's kind of late in the split been the really one of the most popular mid laners suddenly. Yeah, these both of those uh, AP mages, those are the two most popular AP mages used for pit comps um, and, and assassinating people. So it's very interesting that both teams actually had a similar idea. And both teams have said in interviews that they fear the other the most in champion select because all their champions overlap. And you're seeing actually the last of these overlap champions banned away. The Shen no longer allowed for Psycho Sid. Balls had a good performance with him. The Zac dropped away from Medio, so uh, maybe Nasus or Brand Jungle coming in there. And uh, with 30 seconds, <laughs> I'll, to I'll hold out hope for the Jungle Brand. But they—he literally said that we're not going to use it. So, okay. well, it's, it's not going to be Saint Vicious jungling Cassidy here, as Cassidy is banned, Kobe. And so. neither is Saint Vicious. <laughs> no. <It's not> okay. <laughs> but with 50 seconds to go, Vulcan got to Well, we're not getting Shen. The Jace is still up. There's other Man Cloud specials up there as well. And they're just, they're taking their time with this one. They're like, you know what, they're, they're making sure they steal away what they need, but also pick something that's good for their comp. Yeah, I think that, um, dang, I was going to say Zed, but they've already done it now. Uh, Zed would be a, bit, a big pick for both of these teams because since the two AP um, assassins are off the table, mm -hmm. Zed is the AD answer. Um, he's, he's definitely one that's very strong, a very strong duelist. We saw in the end of that Ding Tox and Curse game, Skara, could basically one versus one anyone with a six item Zed, even though everybody else has six items mm -hmm. because of Zed's champion kit and getting the double damage with Death Mark, even if someone has Zhonya's, he does very well. Yeah, you saw him beat up Void Boy, even though Void like itemized as hard as possible, getting solo lane experience the whole time through, and nearly carried the game for Dignitas, of course. Man Cloud, I'm gonna have to repeat that performance. Meanwhile, Cloud9 though, <laughs> uh, they're they're playing with fire right here. You know, they've got 15 seconds to go. If they don't switch, those are gonna be locked in for them. So this is actually, yeah, that was that would have been a two-part troll because they've been making a lot of jokes about the Annie Shin Zhao lane that TSM mm -hmm. ran, and, and that was uh they've been uh, threatening to use that as well. But it looks like they are not gonna follow through on that, and they're gonna go with Mio's second favorite jungler, Elise who was banned against them quite often. And yeah. he's even in the 3.10 patch, uh, she's still very strong at creating plays and she's still banned out against them a lot. You're right, I'm trying to remember like the last time at least has been allowed in a Cloud9 game. Like thinking back to the picks and bans, like someone steals that away or like, <laughs> so yeah, there we go. So the Elise coming in there, Balls I think has played her at some point before, but. Yeah, he has. Yeah, that was actually have. one of the few games that Balls lost his lane. Yeah, so I that's what makes me think that this is going to be Medios, but it could still go back to balls. So of course this Sona coming in there as well for Lemonation, a lot of performance right there. Interestingly enough, um, in in the game I was referencing, he actually opened up with a uh, uh, mana manipulator and just spammed abilities. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was just like trying something new, but I actually uh, had to deal with lots of mana on Sona. It wasn't very fun. I I really do love that about Lemonation. He definitely theory crafts a lot of different. Um, starts that a lot of other supports don't like yeah. he was a big proponent of taking summon or heal for a long time uh, because of the the ramping health that you get if you take the mastery as well mm -hmm. and and that was before anybody had uh, started to take it and so meanwhile of course Vulcan have made their own choices a lot of these mm. were uh, favorites of cloud nine back in the past so Kennen and Zyra coming through of course uh, even Zuna had been playing Ash before so we might even see that combo come out right so the Zyra Ash combo that we've been seeing so much from cloud nine and then people who started using Cloud9's comps uh, is not going to be possible for the C9. It is still on the table for Vulcan, but um, Ash really is looking for... Uh, that's like the, the guaranteed engage that you're always looking for. Um, and with this composition, they already have so much zone control with Zyra and Kennen. Um, I, don't, I don't know if they're going to want to add that one on top here. Well, Cloud9 with the last second to go, going to lock in two more champions. The Jace does go through as well as Jarvan, so some engagement mm -hmm. is available here for the Cloud9, as well as a little bit of follow-up from Sona and whatnot. The Jace, though, for Poke, so a pretty well-rounded lineup, it looks like, for Cloud9. Yeah, well-rounded, and they've got the Kennen Circular Ultimate, as well as the Zyra Circular Ultimates, as well as Zed Spinning Slash. Uh, anyway, the, the two uh, AoE Ultimates would be used very well to protect an Ash. Um, and they will also get the engage whenever they want. So they can have their Zed split pushing mm -hmm. freely. And then if he comes out on top in that one versus one, 
then then they can actually engage on the other team with the Ash Arrow, and he can just come from behind. Um, and if he loses on that one versus one, then they're going to have to use all the disengage that comes with Zyra. And they'll just bravely run away, run away, away, and hope to not drop down here. But Zuna yeah. still considering his last few picks, and he goes back old school style. No Ash, you can have it, Cloud9. The Zuna Tristan, I haven't seen that in so long, and I felt like it was such a successful pick for him. And meanwhile, the Lee Sin coming through, so... Uh, that's going to be a fun one for Smithy. Tristan is what got Vulcan to the top of the rankings. That's what yeah. got them up into that second place in the first uh, first half of the split there. And at the same thing, though, the Lee Sin for Smithy was a huge part of that as well. He is one of the best North American Lee Sins, um, always opting for that very early sight stone mm -hmm. so that he can both make a lot of plays in the early game and leave a lot of vision for his team, just scattered around wherever he does um, make those jumps. So it's a very, uh, very uh, safe picks here for Vulcan. The last two are definitely comfort champions for them. So Vulcan playing comfortable, playing Vulcan style. We saw comfort picks actually work well for TSM just a couple games ago, last game actually. Uh, meanwhile, Cloud9, they're actually kind of holding true to what they said before. They're picking the vein against Zed, saying, look, Sneaky can beat him 1v1. Um, apparently Sneaky thinks he can out-sneak a ninja. And it's it's going to be very interesting too now where Sneaky and Lemonation go because we have uh, on the 3 of 10 patch, we've even delayed the spawn camps of the small minions even longer. Mm -hmm. So when when we come up with two versus two lane matchups, it's because they've chosen it. We don't have uh, we don't have all the randomness anymore and all the blue sides saying there is bottom. So yeah. the early wards deep in the jungle are going to determine the the vision that allow these guys to choose the matchups. And we'll see what matchup these guys go for. Of course, Vayne, Sona. Uh, I guess there's enough to stay in there, but Vayne, I guess we typically talk about her having one of the weaker laning phases, and you try to shelter that champ until Sneaky goes late game. But I guess that said, uh, you know, Sneaky is a player that his teammates sort of compliment for doing more with less. That even if his lane sucks, even if he doesn't get a lot of the farm and it goes to his teammates, he still excels pretty well. Yeah, that's so Cloud9 have always been um, oriented around objectives and. Um, Vulcan, they've done a similar thing, but they do like to feed Zuna as much minions as possible. So you're right, that is two uh, slightly different takes on the AD carry role here. But let's jump into Summoner's Rift and see how it turns out. See, here we go, everyone. The battle between the number one and number two teams in the North American LCS. Vulcan hoping to win two more games to guarantee themselves that number two slot, no matter what else happens. You're seeing Vulcan here on the blue side, Cloud9 in the top right corner in red, and the team's charging forward in pretty similar formations. Spreading out only now to look for some wards and the level one engagements. And the level ones are going to be very dangerous here. We have two Doran's Blade starts on Vulcan plus a Red Elixir start. So that's a lot of power early here um, for the team Vulcan. Whereas Cloud9, they've actually had balls start with a shield. So that makes me think that they may be looking for a two versus one. Might be where he ends up heading around. These guys still tossing out skill shots, looking for each other. But mind you that at the very top side of the map, there's a successful invade by Zuna and Bloodwater, as well as Mancled. They got a couple of deep wards into the Cloud9 red buff area, though Cloud9 knows those are there. You see them ping out and have their own ward. They know kind of what happened with that invade. Exactly. The, the only difference here um, is that uh, Cloud9 preemptively warded their red, so they saw him come in. But Vulcan did the same thing. They just didn't have to use a ward to see it. Uh oh, 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 it's a 5v3 oh, Vulcan. They're gonna get the face like the jump in on the balls, and he explodes for first blood. That's gonna go to Zyra Smithy. He's flashing back with 12 HP. Two kills picked up. Medios not in a good place either. Flash away. Mad Cloud finds a third, and now High and Sneaky are alone. Exhaust onto Sneaky. The grasping roots land. Will they get a fourth? Zuna, be careful. High's dropped low as well, and look at that. TSM 3 for one's nice, but Vulcan 3 for nothing. Way the heck better. When was the last time we actually saw a face check in the level one from any team in the in the LCS? Not a very long time ago. Yeah, quite a and, while ago. And it's actually funny because I heard both of these teams talking. Here, let's take a look at it again. It's just Brawl's face checking. I mean, you walk by past the ward. <laughs> Not much to say there. They want to try and stay into Brawl to even it up. But Cloud9 come out way behind on this one. Not only do they give up first blood, but they also give up three kills and no answer from Cloud9. And look at what Bloodwater did with that kill, by the way. He bought a bunch of wards, unless he just hasn't gone back to base, um, which I doubt. He's just like, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I could go for a sight stone or something, but I'm going to get more wards and be an awesome support. Uh, and, of course, just the rest of the team, happy and rich and fun. And now Mancloud gets to fight high with a kill lead. Yeah, and 
It's that early red elixir. The red elixir double Doran's uh, start from Vulcan that I talked about being so dangerous in the level one really paid off. And even though the red elixir is ticking, he's also got a Doran's blade on top of that now. So <laughs> Pandora Cloud in the mid lane uh, is going to give High a very hard time. And you're just seeing him push forward and push forward. Meanwhile, the junglers have taken their initial camps as well. Meteos just finishing off his red buff. Level three double up. We'll see where he goes. Meanwhile, uh, the same thing had happened here for Smithy. But the thing to point out as well is we have standard one-on-one -on -one lanes down here at the bottom and the standard 2v2 at the top. So we will get to see uh, Balls handle the Elise in the one versus one situation and look for redemption here. So last time he had it, he did lose out um, and he was just beaten straight up. Mm -hmm. Looks like he, he was calling for that one. He's actually started at a disadvantage, so it's going to be even harder this time. Yeah, three assists, a little bit of a minion kill lead as well for Sid. We look back, and Sid, or sorry, Mancloud, I should say, just is still playing that push lane. I want to see if High can keep up. It's 13 to 17 in minions right now. I want to see if High can hold on against, again, that, that red elixir disadvantage, the little bit of experience, uh, and the constant pushing. So far, he's he's close. Close is, is decent, especially center against that Zed, but he's got to be very uh, careful when Mantor Cloud does hit level six because he can easily be all in. Jace is a fairly squishy champion, and Zed's kit is more than enough to 100% burst him at that level 6. All right, so we can see standard lane matches running around. The junglers interfering less than we oh, normally see in one top. But there's the jump in. Bloodwater does get dropped down. Great pickup by Sneaky. The Flash gets uh, Zuna away from Meteos, but Cloud9 finding their opening right there. Great gank by Meteos. Yeah, a little bit of overextension, and now high in the middle. Ooh, a little bit flub there on the flash. Awkward <laughs> flash by High, but the player's trade ignites. Man Cloud, of course, had no summoners up. He burned in level one, but Smithy finds Meteos. He was a good bit of damage and falls <laughs> across the wall. <laughs> Interesting little slow mo cake, but that's going to be enough for him. Smithy lurking in wait and playing chicken. Seals away from the jungle, too. Smithy going for that YouTube highlight reel with the slow mo kick <laughs> over the wall and another kill. This game is going fast and furious. And these are both, uh, both of these teams, they are fairly secure in the standings. And I heard them talking before in the lobby, uh, before this game. They said they were going to step a little bit outside of their normal game plan. They're not playing as cautious as usual. And you can see it here. They're testing different different avenues and uh, trying to see what a little extra aggression will get them. Uh, well, I think Ball's face checking a brush. Probably not an adaptation they're going to keep yeah. in the playoffs. Uh, I could be wrong. Maybe you got to just... try it once. It's training with weights <laughs> is what it is. There you go. They went 22 and two already, or 21 and two already. It's like, well, let's see if we can lose some gains if we throw away our level one fight. And uh, so far, they found a gank. They're pulling it back. So maybe High's actually pulled a minion kill lead off of everything. So he's doing well against Man Cloud. And High, uh, people might be a little bit um, uneasy with him playing Jason again, but he played a lot earlier in the split, and he would always start with that um, Doran's. But he's very comfortable with that champion. Um, even with all the changes to the the tier of the goddess and and to Jace's kit even so it's a very strong champion especially uh, for the late game since he isn't being hindered too much by that start from mandatory cloud they will have a, a fairly good um, siege option here whenever you combine Sona with Jace then that's sustain mm -hmm. plus poke in the end game all kinds of crazy fun stuff then cloud nine kind of like to play the long range game as they uh, unfortunately still sit at a 1500 gold deficit but Man Cloud's actually lurking in the shadows, trying to find a little something to do. Might just be stealing away the wolves, but he has hit level six, and you mentioned what a scary right. mark that is. So I'll go into that a little bit deeper now. Um, since he is level six, Zed's kit, it's very easy to get to Jace, and you pop your ultimate, it leaves a shadow right behind him. So Jace's normal counter to, to all in assassins is to knock them away with his hammer, mm -hmm. uh, with the thundering blow. but. Zed can just pop right back to the shadow that's behind you. And so it basically negates one of Jace's escape moves that he usually relies on. And that's why Zed is so effective at taking him out. Pre-level six, or post-level six, and you can see how careful now High is being, even though he was winning before. And that man is playing extremely fast. Ignite is back up, but Smithy is standing on top of a ward. Tries to find High, says hello, lands the cube, but High says goodbye. And up top, we have uh, another exchange here between the Zyra Sona um, supports. That's all about the skill shots from Zyra. If he had locked up 
um, the grasping roots, then they can go all in. And Zuna is a Tristana player that will not hesitate to rocket jump into danger, mm -hmm. even very early in the game, before he gets his items. It worked in the level one fight, certainly. He got the slow and got the reset and managed to stay uh, alive the whole time. But there, there are other Tristanas out there who jump into fights, and uh, it's the wrong call. And <laughs> You know, just sometimes tendencies can bite you in the end, so you got to be a little bit careful what Zuna does, and hopefully he does all right here. Of course, Ball's wanting uh, what revenge from last time around when we had a sort of a rough game. Uh, you can see him there, 15 minions down up against Psycho Sid. They haven't even gone back to buy pretty much for anything this game so far. They've just been holding up in lane, and Sid has been doing a very good job. Uh, what highest KDA for a top laner and, and beating up on balls who's had what two MVP weeks so far and Smithy here is a, a, does a very good job keeping track of the timer of the red buff even though he missed the Q he still goes in to check that uh, because he was aware that it just spawned and now we have to have Mito's just give it up because level five Jarvan can't handle the, the already level six Lee Sin and that's a great steal for him and not to mention Meteos had actually burned his smite, stealing away his, or grabbing, I should say, his own blue buff. So Meteos realized, I can't even smite battle this guy. So, uh, yeah, in addition to, of course, the fight power right there. So, uh, good job right there by Smithy. Still waiting around, pushing Sneaky off of his turret and saying, great, I'm going to show up top lane and get myself a turret kill for us. Meteos get himself into trouble here. Yeah, nice job by Psycho Sid, figuring out, hey, you know, they're going for our stuff. And that's going to be the team of Vulcan just collapsing and, and not allowing anything for Cloud9. Really great play by these guys. The turret goes down to the top lane. Mino steals away a big golem, but it's 3-1 to one in buffs now for the Vulcan squad. Yeah, that ward uh, for Mandatory Cloud in the bottom side river really paid off right there. They they already assumed that Medios would go to try and counter steal the red, but having the vision confirmation allowed them to uh, collapse with certainty with both their ninja solo laners. Good job then by Vulcan holding on and now a, a two and a half thousand gold lead that gold has stretched now in the favor of the second place squad hoping to make their way into a guaranteed buy in the first round of the playoffs. Seiko Sid still just holding on to his lane right here. He's not actually left the lane at all. And actually there's the dual lane for Vulcan finally recalling back and heading towards the bottom. Now they're grouping up for Dragon. And they've already taken the top turret here. So they have the man advantage and they've already got the gold advantage in their hands too. So Cloud9 don't really have an option to contest this right now. And thinking back, yeah, there we go. Good pick up right there, Smithy, getting the smite down on Dragon. Thinking back to the actual two losses that Cloud9 has had in this season so far, one of them was to Counter Logic Gaming, where a very similar thing happened. They gave about three kills at level one, and CLG snowballed the game from that. Cloud9's other loss was actually to Vulcan themselves. So you've got not only the team that normally beat you before, but also in the same situation as one of your other losses. And Vulcan certainly seem to be playing this game properly, continuing to build advantages, and might make that number three. Well, getting behind in a level one situation is really disheartening for any player. And in our interview with Medios, he said, a lot of the times uh, it's extremely hard for him to want to continue to play a game <laughs> after they've started out at such a disadvantage before the minions even spawn. And so that really is a problem that Cloud9 have to deal with. They yep. want to actually practice games where they start out with something like that and then work on keeping their spirits up, actually, and, and staying in the game. It's actually something that they really do need to work on before um, something like Playoffs or Worlds because that is, you're right, one of the few things that has caused them to lose games. Let's see if they can do it right there. High getting jumped on a little bit. Not too much damage coming out, but there's the aggression again in the bottom lane. Zuna and Bloodwater constantly trying to fight balls, but Lemonation coming around the side is Envision of a ward. Goes for a little bit of poke. Woo. Smithy waiting around on the wings. Root does not quite land. No kill picked up so far. Of course, Smithy, we saw him last week, the MVP, and he's putting on a great performance so far. The kills, the buff steals. He's doing a heck of a lot this mid game. Very scary Sona gank there from Lemonation, <laughs> but as the, the clock keeps ticking here, and we do have the teams converging more. Let's take a look at the team compositions. Never mind, Lemon Nation gets bursted 100%. He goes down, does not manage to land the crescendo in time. It does go on cooldown, actually, so it just doesn't quite hit. And there's the jump in on Media, slowed down by the Bilgewater Cutlass of Zuna. Otherwise, gets away one for zero. Good pick up there for Vulcan. Three versus three lane, something's bound to break out. Uh, but <laughs> Vulcan definitely taking advantage of the low HP of Sona right there, bursting her down, and they'll be able to claim yet another turret. So this lead that started out with the level one three kills for Vulcan mm -hmm. is continuing to grow uh, over time here. 
Yeah, two turrets down now for these guys and the dragon from earlier. Nothing given up by this Vulcan team. We talked about how Cloud N was such an objective focused team. They were so good at making sure that they got the dragons, they got the turrets. That's not happening at all for them. All they found was one single gank by Meteos. That's all he's managed to do. So, in the rest of these matchups, here's the push in. The ult coming across, going for the damage onto high. The roots not quite landing, but the plant slowing him down. And Mad Cloud takes down a kill in a 2v1. So that was actually a high going aggressive in that one and a poor timing as Bloodwater came out from the side. Balls wants to answer though. Doesn't quite land the stun. Minion taking that for Bloodwater. Good job commanding his minions right there. And another fight just not quite going Cloud9's way. So Cloud9, they do have a composition meant for uh, counter engage um, and, and poking anyway. So them being behind, they're still going to play this composition the same way that they were going to play it anyway which would be to have them set up um, around a turret. The only difference now is that they're going to have to sit up around their turrets, yeah. and they're not going to be sieging up against Vulcan's turrets. So what they're going to do is set up around their turret, which makes it even harder for Vulcan to dive them. Um, and they're going to wait for Vulcan's dive and then use Sona's Crescendo as a counter engage. They're, we're probably not going to be seeing them going on the offensive there and the flash ins from Lemonation. All right, then of course, guys, just to get you updated on what's happening for this pause, quick keyboard issue with Zuna. Should be about three minutes till we get yourselves back into this one, so stick with us. Going to talk about this game a little bit as it's paused and we get our issues sorted out. So uh, we look at these teams, and uh, it's interesting because while Cloud9 wants to poke and sort of group up, mm -hmm. you've actually got a pretty split up, or the ability to be split up team for Vulcan. You've got the Zed, and we saw that from Dig the Toss's Skara, where he was actually kind of the saving grace, that split pushing Zed, soloing people, doing a good job there. You've got the cannon as well from Psycho Sid, who's good at 1v1-ing. And it seems like they've got the makings to split up Cloud9 and not let them play the poke game. Yeah, they do have a vi the, the strong duelist, uh, possibly the strongest duelist in the game in that Zed that we talked about. Um, and he's going to be able to side push a lane, which Cloud9 could take advantage of. Elise is very good at picking off people as well as Jarvan. So they do have the means to actually uh, pick off stragglers and turn this game around. Um, from mispositionings from Vulcan as well. Let's see if Cloud9 can find those then. The push in on the mid lane. Cloud9 are grouping up on turrets, as you said. Trying to knock down these minions. Zuna actually in a bit of a rough spot. Down to half HP, poked down. But no follow-up crowd control is used right here. Vulcan able to back themselves out. The turret still low on HP. The push still looks like... No, the rest of the team is actually backing out. Vulcan's not going for the siege just yet. They're definitely going to want to rotate um, bottom here because not only uh, is Zuna ahead in minions, but he also has those kills, which allowed him to finish the Blade of the Rune King, which is a giant upgrade from just the Cutlass. So there's yeah. no way that Sneaky uh, is going to want to duel him right now. Now Sneaky's got up to a thousand gold still to go to finish that combined right here. Zuna at level nine. Definitely nice for him, and of course, just clearing the wave so easily with the explosive shot. Bloodwater, interestingly enough, look at the bottom left, actually maxing his Q first. The root duration goes up when you rank Grasping Roots, but decided, I actually want the Q poke and damage output, spawning more plants. It's not a build I've normally seen a lot from Support Zyra. Very, very um, offensive build here. And he does, uh, he does have some very good early wards as well, so he's definitely keeping up uh, this gold advantage that they have by continuing to put vision in both sides of the jungle of Cloud9, which is exactly what you want to do when you have that early deed to keep it. Looks like they're doing a very good job of that one, actually, and that's what TSM talked about in their interview as well, saying, yeah, we got a big early lead. We don't want to throw and then realize, mm -hmm. you know, we actually probably could have played a lot more aggressively that game. Maybe we, maybe we should have. So Vulcan turning the screws a little bit, right? Aggressive wards, putting the pressure on Smithy with a, with a clear as well with his oracles. And that ward just paid off for Psycho Sid up top. We had a rotation from Medios, but as soon as he walked over the ward, Psycho Sid backed up a little bit, and there was going to be no play for Cloud9 to make up there, and some wasted time from Medios, allowing Vulcan to have the confidence to take down this bottom turret, knowing that the jungler is over by the red. Really well played. Three men strong. Secondary turret goes down, making it three to zero in turrets. Man Cloud with a pink ward sweeping away another ward from Cloud9 towards that mid lane. So Vulcan still blinding the map, blacking it out from Cloud9 and wanting to just rain all over their parade. And you're seeing now with the oracles, the ward control, dragon taken down as well. Everything is being taken by these guys. The mid lane turret goes down as well. I'm just listing off things that Vulcan are doing well. 
Well, they are doing everything well, so you can just go ahead and list off all the all the stuff in the game. With the champions that they have, they are winning every single lane right now, so they don't have to group up. They can just keep the um, keep up the threat on every single lane uh, of taking the turret, as well as kill potential in each one. Because up top, Psycho Sid can handle balls, and before this, he had a good ward. Wow. And actually gonna bait this one in. Smithy comes up to help. The flash out to the knockup. The cocoon lands, and Smithy won't quite find what he needs, but there's the damage on the Meteos. Gets that one opened up, but there's a one for nothing. Good play by everyone involved. Zuna forced to run away. Stranglethorn's getting two knockups. But that'll be enough to let the Vulcan AD carry a support run away. But the pressure is still on in the top lane. Three versus one. But remember, the rest of Cloud9 are rotating up here. This could be close. The power of the Zyra disengage right there, combined with already the mobility on a Tristana and the ability to rocket jump away, as well as Buster shot people back, means that they are a very good support and AD combo for a composition like this that has Zed and, uh, and Psycho Sid on that cannon up top split pushing. Well, then good escapes with these guys. Everyone making the right moves. Again, just that one top lane gank early on in the game for Meteos making this all turn around for them. Otherwise, Vulcan playing this game pretty much by the book. Looking at the gold, by the way, there is enough now for Sneaky to finish his Blade of the Ruin King. So that Assassin power spike there, the item he needs to beat up Zed, the item he needs to win one-on-one -on -one battles is here for him. And I want to know if that's going to be just enough for Cloud9 to start turning things around because they're down almost 9,000 gold. They've got to find something soon before they lose more of the map. They would have to um, start their comeback right now, and we are we have to start getting worried here too because we talked about Cloud9 wanting to stay sharp, and they look anything but sharp right now. They they look uh, like they're ma <laughs> they look yes that would be the opposite. They're <laughs> they're making very uncharacteristic uh, Cloud9 mistakes. Balls is trying to make the plays right there here. There it is. Nice job, Balls. One v one takes the fight. Of course, Psycho Sid's uh, summoners and ult were down from the prior fight, and so. Balls capitalizes on cooldowns. Well done. Now, this is what they're going to have to do is make the plays like that um, in the solo lanes because as a group, it's very, very difficult for this Cloud9 to take down Vulcan. You can see, even with the 4 versus 4, Vulcan are continuing to push. They've got a man down, and they see that Balls is still up top, yet they're trying to keep Cloud9 pinned inside their base by pressuring both of these turrets. Well, this is good here from Balls, though. Taking out that top turret. You know, yeah, he's he's not going to be able to join his team right now, but it's at least some kind of global gold for this C9 lineup. Though minion waves, of course, still floating in, as you say, keeping the rest of Cloud9 stuck in. But there it is. Is this... Unless Balls just stops. All right, I guess that could have been a turret, but I think he was afraid of getting ganked. So no turret actually picked up here for the Cloud9 lineup. Unfortunately, they're still a bit down, but... He will get away safely. Yeah, and he was afraid for good reason. They had a ward up in that outside jungle, and they could see Manta Cloud coming around to circle from the top. So he assumed that Kennen was on the way, which he was, just barely getting out in time. That was a very good awareness from Balls up there in that top lane. Good read by him, keeping himself safe and not getting knocked down. Now, as we kind of get ourselves around the map, the teams keep flip pushing. I want to point out a couple of other things with uh, with character builds. So you see Sneaky has actually maxed his Silver Bolts first. We'd actually see that from TPA's VB back in the World Finals uh, for Season 2, and Sneaky kind of bringing that one back out here. But the other ones I wanted to point out is, since the Jace changes, since the gate no longer reduces cooldown, uh, the E uh, with rank, we are seeing High max his uh, his hypercharge second, the W. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, the jungler Meteos is actually maxing his shield second instead of the Damasian standard. So he's nice and tanky in the team fights as he gains levels. And that's really because uh, when they do get behind early, they need someone to be able to tank this team right now. Because their top laner, Balls, uh, he's gone with magic penetration, you know, and he's got a giant spell and a shield, but that's not enough. Elise is not really a tank here. He's going to be um, dodging in and out and trying to land those cocoons. So they have to have that central point of focus. And it's always been kind of the role of Meteos here as that main tank. So. Filling that quite nicely. Again, we're looking at Vulcan, and you mentioned how much they emphasize Zuna as the big late game carry. That Tristana, who's carried so many games at like the 50 minute mark, and you see Zuna alone in the bottom side, able to disengage with the rocket jump and all that, and just getting the farm, getting the levels. He is 13, actually higher than anyone else, but tied with balls on Cloud9. So pretty massive Tristana. And have having them uh, pick Tristana at the last second instead of Ash is really the difference in the uh, the last 10 minutes of this game right now because as Tristana, 
Vulcan don't want to press the issue and dive these turrets because it is definitely dangerous with the disengage of that, that Sona um, that Cloud9 have. They can uh, lock up people under a turret dive with Crescendo. Mm -hmm. um, if they had Ash, they could start it off by stunning a person, and they would not hesitate to go all in. But because they have Tristana, they're waiting for her to get that range where they don't have to dive turrets anymore, and they can just wear them down with that 700-plus uh, range. Mizuna a bit on the wrong side of the map right here. Gets Blade of the Ruin Kinged up by Vayne, but still getting out successfully here for Zuna. That was a bit of a close one. Had to burn his Buster Shot as well to escape. And that's why... It was one of his uh, favorite AD carries in the very beginning um, of the last two splits because they always sort of have a safety net in the end game where a lot of teams run into problems finishing out games. Mm -hmm. Tristana's range gets so high that they can just get a couple of shots onto a turret and back off, but they will slowly wear those down and they don't have to make those dangerous dive moves. Looks like it's going to still be the case here as we see Vulcan, as, as you kind of mentioned, right, the difference in the AD carries, not diving tourists, not shoving themselves too hard, just so okay, reach the end game, Zuna go get huge, we'll close the game out later, that definitely seems to still be the goal. Speaking of Zuna, hasn't gone back in a while, 2300 gold on him, so pretty much has Infinity Edge now if he goes back to base right here, and we see him uh, run back though towards the Dragon area, it seems that Global Objective's still on the, not, uh, on the mind of this Vulcan lineup right here. And as we see Mancloud and Zuna go for it, it's just more by the book play. They're controlling the map, and they're now putting themselves over 10,000 gold in the lead compared to Cloud9. And that dragon is the reward that you get for continuing to push all three lanes in and getting the vision uh, at Cloud9's turrets. And good flash away by Boslo. He's going to survive this 1v2. Had to, of course, burn flash for it, but Sid is without Ignite or his ultimate. And the last time he was actually without those abilities, it actually allowed Cloud9 to pick up a kill onto him. I want to see if they capitalize on this cooldown here. Because it seems like kills are something in, in just very short commodity. I didn't get the words right for that one. <laughs> but there aren't many in Cloud9 need a couple. <laughs> well, yeah, it, like we don't even need the kills actually from Smithy and Psycho Sid, but it's going to be icing on the cake here as High is really in trouble. Yeah, he's taking a bunch of pain. The Q does land. Flash not going to matter. Stun even lands there from Psycho Sid. Smithy picks up the kill. 3-0-3 three, three on him. That's pretty happy. And hey, look. No one's on the map. They get a turret and the push on a Sneaky. Mancloud goes all in on Sneaky. Doesn't want to overextend, though, as it would cost him his life. The ball's getting slowed down. Sid trying to rejoin. Lands the Q. Can he get the stun with his, with his proc W passive? Doesn't go for it. Oh. And there's the knockup here from Medias. Can they re-engage? Take down Sid. He does not have ult. Has to burn his flash, though. Another cooldown lost here for Sid. 0-1 and 5. Holding up. And High is still down for another 10 seconds, and they've got a minion wave at this top turret. So Vulcan can continue to keep their minions pushed on both the mid and top. Root lands on a minion, but he jumps back over the wall. You're seeing Zuna, though, play the siege game. That long range of a level 14 Tristana, that mid lane turret down to about half HP. All the lanes have been pushed repeatedly by Vulcan. They've kept the minions on the other side of the map this whole time. Every kill they've gotten, they've turned into turret pressure. Not only have they had all their lanes shoved up so they get vision from the minion waves, but Bloodwater uh, has constantly been walking back and forth from red side to blue side, or from red buff side jungle to blue buff side jungle mm -hmm. and dropping wards. So they not only have vision of all the lanes, but all of the jungle of Cloud9 too, and they've been able to take every single thing on the entire map. And well played by these guys. Everyone kind of pitching in and making sure uh, everything is being played by the book right here. Vulcan's doing a very good job of that one. The item build still coming through. The Blade of the Ruin King, Brutalizer, Last Whisper, all done for Man Cloud. That's the standard terrifying Zed build that we see so often. The Infinity Edge and Blade of the Ruin King also already done here for Zuna. And they're eyeing Baron, and they find Falls. The jump is in. Stranglethorns comes across. Has to repel up, but I don't know if he has anywhere to really go. Medias goes for the knockup, tries to help take the team out. Blood water low in HP. There's the Crescendo. Do they have the damage for Zuna? Shot Glass comes across. Doesn't find a lot. Here comes Psycho's hit, but he's been exhausted. It's still enough. Two kills picked up here for Vulcan, and they keep on moving forward. The slow, the jump back from Smithy, the dive back into the back line. Nice buster shot, stops Sneaky. Turret goes down from the split push, and Zeddy's onto the inhibitor right now, but the fight is still continuing. Nope, the fight stops. Just kidding. <laughs> and man, during that whole time, it was only four members of Vulcan over there, so they are also rewarded with that inhibitor, Man Cloud, that amazing duelist in Zed that we talked about. Nobody even wanted to go try and fight him. And not even an option. So Baron now being attempted. 
Health bars are a little bit low for this Vulcan swap, but it just might be enough with no one from Cloud9 even trying to stop. You mentioned the ward sweeping from Bloodwater. That definitely happened right here. Man Cloud scaring Sneaky away, picks up the Baron buff. Well done, Vulcan. And yes, that was sort of a second face check from Balls, but that one was really a mistake forced by Vulcan because Cloud9's vision was denied from the Baron. Uh, he was just trying to go over there and get uh, a little bit of knowledge for his team back. This the first time, though. A little bit unnecessary. A little bit. Just a little bit. At least he was with the team. Just unfortunately, uh, the team fight got one anyway. So Sneaky is now on split push duty. Actually has gone for that static shiv. He's a player that we keep saying just will buy a static shiv whenever. Just It's his item. And they need wave clear right now. So that's pretty much what he's getting this for. Um, they can actually shove out lanes much quicker. Vayne, without a static shiv, it does not deal with creep waves very well. So it's definitely a, a pickup for him that, you know, he's a big fan of that item, but also plays well for this game specifically. Oh, that's nice and happy for this guy then. So Sneaky going to do that. Oh, Smithy nearly stealing away the red, but that's going to go to Sneaky right here. However, there's no flash for Vayne. It's still enough to get him away. All right, good red buff though. And what level are we at in Tristana? Only 16 here, two more. And we do hit that critical point where uh, Vulcan can actually just come up to seize the turret where he can get those auto attacks off on the turret without having to worry about that crescendo. A crescendo on Zuna and Mandatory Cloud, at least, is pretty much all that Cloud9 can come back into this game with. They're gonna have to lock up many people with that crescendo yeah. and make use of their turrets damage the whole time as well. And, and so all Vulcan mm -hmm. have to do are spread out right now. And one thing to mention also is that the exhaust is still down for a few seconds, uh, 38 seconds on Lemonation, so they don't actually have a way of stopping Psycho Sid's ulti either unless High gets a good knockback. So all the tools really available here for the Vulcan squad. Again, the crescendo so mandatory right now. It's, it's a push in the top lane. Ball's very low in HP. Look at the pickup there from Man Cloud. Takes him down in the split push. And they just might keep on moving forward, Vulcan. There's the pressure onto the turret. He's just going to take that one down, and they're into the base. So taking out a person means you don't even have to wait for more levels. They go all in, easily take that turret. It's going to be a second inhibitor, and then probably Nexus turrets. There we go. No, it's actually the first look for the top lane. Because it got the minion wave there. Of course, the bottom inhibitor already dead. This will be all three inhibs taken out here for Vulcan. There's still 20 seconds before the top lane at least shows back up. Cloud9 trying to put in a little bit of damage. No, Vulcan's going to head right back out. And this is the first time that we've ever seen Cloud9 just get demolished like this. And they definitely have not overcome that weakness to level one uh, deficits that I talked about. Uh, and maybe it's because they're, they're kind of brushing this one off, but you have to be worried if mm -hmm. you're a Cloud9 fan, because that's something that they do have to shore up and they're gonna have yeah. to deal with that at some point. So it's yeah. uh, a little bit worrisome. They're not actually making full use of this. Hey, you didn't have to be Psycho Sid to win that level one team fight. If they can't come back from this, they've got to make sure they learn how to fix all this stuff. The push still coming through. Cloud9 holding on as a group of five, looking for the team fight. Medios, though, down below half HP. The pressure onto the turret's first one goes down. That makes 10 unanswered turret kills here for Vulcan. They're still right up in front. Baron buff still being worn for 30 more seconds. Super minions flooding in. Home guard coming in for Cloud9. Turret losing more and more health. Will the engage happen? Sneaky rooted up. Next turret almost going down. They don't quite find it just yet. More HP drops. Turret to survive. And there's the engage. Psycho said pop. Zodi is not caught by the Grishano. Meteor is going to fall down. That's number one picked up. The jump back enters the top side. A rampage for mandatory Cloud. Sneaky forced away. Ball's running back as well. Two kills so far. Psycho Sid now in the front lines. All three of Cloud9 stuck inside their fountain as the push is in here for Vulcan. They're going to pick up the win right here against Cloud9 in just 30 minutes. Nexus goes down. Congratulations, Vulcan, for the win. Congratulations. Uh, and so they are going to lock in that uh, the second spot. Um, all they need is that what one, one more win. One, lo one loss from CLG and TSM, and they don't even have to win anymore. <laughs> but Cloud9... You do have to uh, start getting a little bit worried here. Yes, they always talk about how they have so much fun playing and they they like to, to joke around, but nobody likes losing. And I feel like after actually losing that game, it should be a sobering experience for them and they will step it up in the next games of Super Week because they did look pretty bad in that game. Yeah, you saw it on their face. They're like, yeah, that was not well played. If you actually heard the player audio just in there, I said that level one, and we're like, yep. 
Level one was kind of important right there, not face checking. They really have to be careful, though, and not just sort of brush it off as, oh, sure. we got a level one deficit. That one didn't count. Yeah. We, we weren't really trying hard. Yeah. They, they really have to uh, stick to their guns, you know, and stay sharp, like we said. Mm -hmm. um, because Don't be spoons, cloud nine. <laughs> you're not going to have much more opportunity like that. All right. Well, guys, we've got to take a short break. But when you return, Vulcan's Smithy will join us to talk about taking out cloud nine. Then it's time for our fifth match of the day, Team Solo Mid versus Team Coast. Don't go anywhere because the North American League of Legends Championship Series will be back in a flash crescendo. Welcome back, everyone, to the League of Legends Championship Series live from Los Angeles. I'm Riving from the third, joined by X Smithy from Team Vulcan. You guys picking up a win over Cloud9, a very big win for you guys, obviously in second place, and can't change much about Cloud9's future, but you can keep yourself in a very nice spot. Coming into that game, you guys left open a few choice bans for Cloud9, like Rumble and such. What were your thoughts in the trip pick ban phase? Uh, we were just mostly uh, scared of uh, Cassidy with the Shen. And we just banned Cassidy, and uh, we thought that they were gonna ban Shen uh, like early, f earlier, and that's why we just left Shen up, and we just banned Zed because mostly, or I mean, pick Zed just because that's High's like main champion, and that's pretty much uh, snowball stuff from level one too. So you guys have definitely had better. Uh Results than most versus Cloud9, obviously coming in with a second win here. The early game aggression, is that a must to take out Cloud9? Uh, definitely, and uh, the level one uh, fight that went against us, or it, it set the pace for us like till late game, and that pretty much uh, got us the win. So coming into this matchup, obviously we've talked a little bit about Super Week. You guys have way more games to play, finalizing the fourth game against the teams that you have not yet. How do you continuously come up with new strats? It's pretty much just uh, keeping, uh, researching other teams and try to see their weaknesses and try to just take advantage of it. And it's pretty much Cloud9 usually is a solid team, like any phase. And we just uh, take those little, little by little mistakes that they do and we try to make that as a win. And Nick Smithy, yourself grabbing MVP last week. I'm glad I got a <laughs> chance to sit with you on the couch this week. What is it about, you know, your gameplay? What is it about a jungler in general that can help you stay unpredictable in, on top of your game? It's pretty much just not mostly the jungler. It's mostly about uh, vision and try to uh, avoid wards at all times. Try to be sneaky and just wait for like an opportunity. And it's pretty much just that. And enough about games. You guys obviously have enough to think about and stressful games to come in the day. So just personal things. Are there, are there any things you do before a game to get yourself pumped up personally that you can share with us? Well, my team just uh, pulled me into this game which is like for the phone. And I, that's all I play now. And it's pretty much just uh, talking to the team, uh, doing strats and stuff. That's pretty much it. And give us a little bit of insight. We obviously see from you know week to week, there's a little bit of teasers saying how practice helps and how this helps and where the stress come from. What is an actual day of work like for an LCS player? It is all games and fun, but there's definitely work put in there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we scrim like not even eight hours a day. We only scrim like four to six hours. And other the other hours, we usually uh, do uh, replays. And it takes like a long time to do replays because we always, uh, check all our mistakes, try to make less and less uh, further on. And after that, we just strategize the next team that we're going against, see what bands they do, see what picks they do. How do you guys continue to have fun in each game, no matter what the outcome? Well, we pretty much play solo queue just to mostly have fun. We, we really don't take it seriously as others do, but uh, that's where mostly our fun comes from. And how, how does solo queue go? Are there anybody anybody in the house that specifically duos up with each other when you guys go at it? Well, uh, Bloodwater and Zuno usually duos, and usually <laughs> me and Benny or Psycho Sid, I mean, duos all the time. We just have fun, and uh, that's it. All right, final question for you, Smithy. Who now do you guys have your eyes set on? Obviously, they're going to all be Ws for you coming out of your you know your hopes. But who do you guys really have your eyes set on to give you some troubles? Uh, it's either TSM or maybe Dig. But uh, I think we're going to get a straight win for all of them. I think we're pretty sure that we're going to get at least three wins or so. All right. Well, congratulations. Still in second, keeping the wins coming in. And a very big win over Cloud9. They're definitely giving some hopes to the other teams coming up within the LCS in the summer split. All right, everyone. We got more games to go on the day. It's still Kobe and Freak on the desk.